Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. Today, I have our guest, Mr. Chris Selden. He is a native of Atlanta, Georgia. It's currently 26 years old. He received his associate's degree in middle grades education back in December 2018 and will be receiving his bachelor's in middle level education May 2021. They will certify him to teach students in grades four through eight in language arts and social studies. He has written and released two books on May 31st of 2020. Uh, one is a children's book and the other is a self-help book. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for have thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So I like to start each conversation by just asking, what's the dream for you? Uh what's the dream for me? So if I like short term, learn long term dream of me. What's your dream? <laughs> uh my dream definitely become a teacher. Okay. Um uh, teach my own class in middle school, like social studies is the ultimate dream. I, I had that dream since I was who uh in second grade. I want to open my own tutoring service, kind of like a sales and a coupon for those of you that are familiar with those two. They're like two of the top upper, upper tutoring centers. Gotcha. Um, and writing more children's books and books in general and seeing where that takes me. So, yeah. So when did you realize the dream and how has it changed over the years? <sighs> Like I said, the teaching uh, dream I've had since I was at elementary school, and that kind of started from, you know, watching my stepmother, who's a, a kindergarten teacher, and just seeing her interact with her students, and it kind of made me want to say, oh, I, I might like doing this, so I would kind of get my little uh, fake <laughs> children in my bedroom and okay. <laughs> have my fake desk and fake lesson plans and everything. I was, I was very creative <laughs> with okay. it. Okay. Awesome. They say your purpose is, it leaves breadcrumbs throughout your entire life. So yes. I understand for sure. So what inspired you to what, tell us about your books um, and then what inspired you to write them? So I have two books out currently. Um, one's a children's book called The Big Move and I will show the cover. Okay. Hopefully they can see it. And that was, so how that came about is I kind of always had a dream. I always want to write a children's book. I just didn't know what or when I was going to do it. So I was recently fired from my job in December 28th of 2019, unexpectedly. So it was kind of like, oh, well, what am I going to, what am I going to do? So kind of fast forward, keep a long story short. My friend invited me to one of his church ministry meetings he was having at his house. It was a, it was a singles ministry actually. And one of the activities they were doing was to create a vision board. And when I, I, I always, I've always heard about it, and I kind of thought it was like a, a woman thing <laughs> to do. <laughs> to have a, a vision? Yeah, I so well, the vision right? board. <laughs> <laughs> it baffles me the thoughts y'all have, honestly. <laughs> like, having a vision for your life is such a female thing. Like, okay. <laughs> well, it's more, well, more so the vision board aspect of like putting okay. it on paper, a poster in my case. I'm gonna let you go. And, <laughs> and so when I made, so I, I, you know, I went ahead and went along with it. And when I was making it, I was just thinking about things. I just wanted, but well, they're, they're, they, they more so wanted, wanted you to do it for the year. I did it for a lifespan. Mm. So when I was putting things on the board, it was like, you know, I was kind of like seeing my, you know, dreams in front of me or mm. pot, asp uh, aspirations in front of me. And when I got home, and I hung it over my over my bed over my um, desk in my room, and I looked at it, and I was like, and it, it's kind of sparked some in me to you know, what well, like I really like I, now that I'm seeing him in 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 on um, paper format, there's no excuse. This is this is motivation for me to you know go after it. So one of the pictures on my board was a picture of, of a children's book, which uh, was Arthur, and I'm I appreciate y'all for me with Arthur, the artwork. Okay. That was one of my favorite children's books growing up, was series growing up. And so I said, well, let me, I'm not working. The jobs aren't calling me back. And so let me, let me, this is a good way to make money. And it's, it's me pursuing something I would love to do. So literally right that minute, I sat down at my desk, opened up a Word document and got the writer. And I wrote the book and shared the, the big move, the children's book in two hours. 
and it was traced and audit, and now here it is. Awesome. What three? I was about two months later, two and a half months later. Cause I started in May and I finished. It. I'm sorry, I started in March and I finished in May. Nice, nice. And tell us a little bit about your self help book. Self help book. So the self help book is called the Why Me: A Journey of Self Reflection and Healing. And that one, now this, that one was unexpected. Um, I never wanted to write, I never thought about writing a full length book. So what happened was the children's book, I, I have, I have these ideas in my head of what I want to speak about, but with children's book, you can't go but so far mm-hmm. with certain stories and whatnot. Right. And, then, and then it's fiction. <laughs> yeah. Then it's fictional too. So it's like, you know, you kind of got to feel, not a filter, but kind of, you can't go way out there, but you know, keep yeah. it kid friendly. So I said, you know, I have so many stories I want to tell, and I want to reach an older audience. Okay. Like, this latter, senior, junior, senior, high school to, you know, grown up. So I said, let me take my own, because I've, I've been, I started therapy as well. That's another reason I started me with self-help, is my journey through therapy. So I said, I have so many stories I wanted to tell, and I and I always hear people talk about these things. So I said, well, let me take my stories and kind of what tell put them in sub put them in sections Mm -hmm. give my testimony and kind of give advice or how i uh further you know overcame that particular struggle or that led to my depression or anxiety gotcha gotcha okay so you touched on some some topics inside the book why me that a lot of people don't discuss what are some ways that people um who are struggling with anxiety or depression can overcome them so uh so some of the topics i spoke about were my weight Mm -hmm. uh my uh well i'm just just gonna say the title of of, uh, the chapters is weight ugly compare myself to others validation friendship lonely uh fear beating the clock um death suicide workplace drama and workplace yeah those so, are real topics <laughs> yes <yeah. laughs> and so when i was when i was thinking the what i was going to say i was you know all these all this stuff led to my different depression either even some some as you know as that are or starting at childhood yeah, and then some kind of starting when I got, of course, older. Of course, work played drama when I got in the workforce. Yeah, and so I, well, my advice I would give um, to somebody overcoming depression is would definitely be talk to somebody. That's that's number one mm-hmm. for me ultimately, because what happened is, you know, especially with me, I'm a person I don't like to express my uh, feeling or talk to anybody because I feel like I don't want that judgment from somebody else or I might feel like somebody else wouldn't quite understand where I'm coming from and then as a man we're not supposed to be quote-unquote whiners mm. or complain we're supposed to be the you know the strong provider the protector right. that, that's supposed to bother us so talking in that that's then that's very problematic because those kept in feelings kind of they manifest to anger mm-hmm. anger which then lead to prison high prison rates mm-hmm. suicide rates and yeah. Uh, 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 my love train thought this then, but oh, health problems it, it can manifest in the health issues. So definitely talk to somebody. That's number one for me. Uh, finding or if you if you if you're not comfortable at the moment talking to somebody, finding a, some kind of outlet, mm-hmm. whether it be journaling, uh, video, uh, I don't know, even video recording yourself talking to yourself on the phone, mm-hmm. just letting it out. Yeah. Uh, finding a quiet space to go into. That's being by yourself. I have a spot out in Atlanta. It's called it was asked on Mountain Park. I call it my peace spot because it has a stream of flowing water, and I love water. It's the sound of it just putting brings me at ease. And I sit there and I'll just listen to the water and just think within my you know be within my thoughts, and that's just complete heaven to me. Um, so yeah, definitely those those are my definite three advice. For sure. And so you mentioned starting therapy. What brought you to that idea, especially as a Black man in America, where we have those stereotypes, we have those stigmas? What led you to the direction of therapy? So what hap- So again, like I said, the ther- the, those stigmas are very negative. So I kind of shied away from it for the longest because I was like, no, I, do I really want to sit down and talk to a complete stranger I don't know nothing about? 
And and then especially speaking, especially speaking to if it was a male therapist, well, I do have one now, but before I started, I was like, yeah, do you know they judge me, you know, for being so open, being vulnerable? I'm not a vulnerable person. Well, back then I wasn't. So kind of what started was a friend of mine named Kiana. We we have these con- like these real life conversations. We saw she called them our golden conversations. So we would talk about life, politics, whatever. So she mentioned in one of the conversations she was, you know, that she wanted to start therapy. And that's when it kind of uh, stuck in my mind, like therapy. And I, I, I uh, um, convinced her to do it, pushed her to do it, encouraged her. But then I, I said, and back, it, it kind of lingered with me for some reason. I don't know why. Why it, it would not, when I finally do it, it makes sense. But so I was kind of so, and I got in this dark space. And I spoke about it in my book, in my suicide chapter. And I was in a real dark space to where, you know, it scared me. Because I was like, whoa, it's like, you know, I, I definitely, I, that's really when it peaked that I need to seek professional help to speak to somebody. So I literally got on Google and I found, you know, went through different therapists that pulled up and here I am. Yeah, I definitely resonate with your story. Um, I've dealt with depression and suicide a majority of my life. Um, And then more recently, since 2016, I've been really struggling with grief in and out. Um, So I definitely understand. um, But even though I'm in a good space now, like I'm still in therapy every week. I journal every day. Oh, yes. It's an on, like it's an every (laughs) day, you know, just trying to unpack some of that baggage and reflecting on why I have the baggage I have right and then trying to create better patterns for moving forward and what that looks like for me so I definitely understand Uh, one piece of advice I always give to people thinking about a therapist um, is finding a therapist that identifies as you identify if you can Mm -hmm. Um, you know so there's nothing a black man can tell me about being a woman and there's nothing a white woman can tell me about being a man I mean about being black so yeah yeah at the end of the day, I've had the most success with Black female therapists. Um, and then I have also had some success with uh, persons of color, female therapists. Um, but that's been my experience. I'm not a licensed counselor, so take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> but that, especially if you're new to therapy and you have those, um, those fears of like, will they judge me? You know, will they believe my my story but when you find somebody who has a similar, um either mm-hmm. has a similar story or at least understands your perspective yeah you know what i mean they're they're coming to the table with it i don't have to translate i don't have to interpret i don't have to break down my language i can speak comfortably and you understand where i'm coming from because even if that's not your exact story you've been around it enough to know where i'm coming from yeah and then kind of piggybacking uh, back to the um, part where you saying you, you go to, you say you go to therapy each week, if I'm listening correctly. And I think people, therapy is not something that you're going to be in. And I, I when I first, before I started, I kind of, I told myself, okay, I, I'll get my head fixed <laughs> once a month and I'll be dip in and out when I want to do it. And really from session one, um, just kind of saying aloud the thing that you suppressed and being and facing that reality. And I find myself getting emotional and I don't really ever do it, <laughs> do that. But, and I literally, I've been going every week since then. Like, well, since COVID kind of started, I kind of go every other week. And that's the thing about it. Um, a lot of people question, like, if you're in a good space, why are you going to therapy? Well, one, I got baggage that I need to be yeah. working through. Um, <laughs> but the reality is you never know when shit's going to hit the fan. Mm-hmm. And having a therapeutic relationship in place, and then you could be like, okay, I know we're working on baggage, but today's not a good day, and I need to deal with what's going on now. Um, for example, um, in 2016, I miscarried twins, and the moment I realized I was pregnant, I sought out a therapist because I had a history with depression, and I knew that put me at a greater risk for postpartum depression. No. Had I not already had that therapist in place, I didn't know I was going to be miscarrying twins after five and a half months. You know what I mean? Like that, that, who plans for that? 
Yeah. But I was grateful to already have that therapeutic relationship intact because she knew my background. She knew my history. She knew my insurance carrier. Like, can you imagine going through a miscarriage and then the first session is full of paperwork? And you're not in a mind space. And I'm pretty sure you weren't in a head space to exactly. do that. But the moment it happened, I think like two days later, I already had something scheduled and I was able to tell her like, I miscarried the twins three weeks apart. So the two days after the first time I found out um, about the first twin, I was in her office, like dealing with what's going on right now. And once that immediate grief started to surpass, we were able to get back to like, okay, now let's deal with the, <laughs> let's deal with the baggage again. Yeah. Um, because we all have baggage. Um, it's Whether we know it or not. Whether you're aware of it or not, it's showing up in your life. Yeah. Um, and so being able to unpack that baggage and process and deal. And not only that, I carry a lot of weight on my shoulders. I need some place to put it down. Yeah. <laughs> and you need that safe space. That's that's and I and I find it uh more comforting. I mean, although I have my you know, close best friend Kiana, I find it more I could be way more vulnerable, open with somebody I don't know. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, it does. I that's been my experience as well. Because there's yeah. no need to there's no judgment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't know me. The, <laughs> even with your best friend, like it's still opinionated. Like she's gonna have an opinion, she's gonna have a perspective, mm-hmm. um, and things like that. So it, it's still different. And I think a lot of times when we when we don't have therapists, we start to use our friends as a therapist and they're not licensed to work you through that process. They don't have any kind of and then and, and then it's kind of and then when you when you have the friend, it's like you find you feel like oh I don't want to keep going to them or you know like a burden yeah yeah so that's kind of what I deal with as well the one that that actually I felt comfortable enough to go to yeah yeah for sure so do you have more books coming in the future? Yes, I actually one. have. I'm <laughs> working on my second um, book now. I'm hoping I'm hoping to release it in the fall, some point winter. So second children's in the book. One year, okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm loving it. I'm just I'm trying to see, strike the fire, strike the iron while it's hot. Listen, do you? Um, I definitely understand to say the least. So I um I put my goal is to publish one book each year, and oh, wow. there are times where I'm like, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> you do not you do you do full length books? Yeah, so all of my books have been in Oh yeah, so you those take a little longer. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I have a few written, but I think it's also about like when is the right time to po- to publish what? Um and then I always review it just to make sure it's like one to make sure it's current cuz like the the book I'm releasing in 2020, I wrote in 2017. So like, you know, there's some other Oh, you you have them yeah, I have quite a few already written in advance. Um, so you know, how long did about, it take you to write them? The shortest book was about two months. Yeah, that's about how long it took me to write. Why me? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, what's next for you in the future? The trees, huh? Um, well, next year, like as you said. So teaching definitely be my future. Um, I'm pray, I'm praying that on a gym just in and shut everything down. So uh, hopefully get that up and then eventually with as much success get my own get a finally get a building that I can actually hold my uh, tutoring service in. Um, I'm sorry. Your internet was going in and out, so I'm gonna ask you that question again, just so we can Oop. turn that part out. Okay. So, what's next for you in the future? So, uh, what's next for me? Definitely teaching. I, did, uh, I graduated next year with my bachelor's. As you said in that lovely introduction. So, in a cl- um, mm, hello, I'm trying to that quick. The tutoring center. I definitely hope by Corona, hope them, fingers crossed, it lets up so I can actually get back to do my tutoring service. 
and eventually getting my own building started. Um, definitely more books <laughs> in the future, and I'm, and it kind of sucked because I released it in the midst of Corona, so I wasn't able to really go out there and promote oh, and yeah. book sign. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I hopefully I can do it in the fall to make up for what I couldn't do now. Right. So that's definitely would be a, uh, the next thing and place for me. Awesome. So what would you say is your number one secret to success? Determination. Definitely. You had to be with, and I, and I, and it's kind of like, I hate the term, not the term, but the saying, you know, you got to work hard for what you want. Why that's true. But determination, you have to be determined and consistent in whatever you do, because if you're not, that you don't have that determination, it will you will fail qu- fail quickly, or you won't stick to it. Mm-hmm. Definitely, so I would say determination. For sure, for sure. So, what final thoughts do you have for the audience? Final thoughts. Um, I hope you all, um, uh, you know, take take uh, you know, from our experience with therapy, kind of, you know, if if I would recommend if you. If you, well, I would say I would recommend it. Of course, you know, if you can afford to do it, please do so. Find some, at least if you don't want to go to therapy or don't can't afford it at the moment, find somebody to talk to. That's, you know, somebody you trust to talk to. Um, and I hope my, you know, for those that do purchase my book, Why Me, I hope you can kind of read through it and find yourself, a part of yourself in that book and kind of take heed to kind of my suggestions. Because I'm 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 still in healing, <laughs> I'm not perfect, so I'm still a work in progress as well. So we are we're all going through this together. For sure, for sure. And um, along the lines of like affordability for therapy, if you have health insurance, start there. Because a lot yeah. of health insurance companies either provide it for free as preventative care or very, very discounted. Like it might be like $15, $20 a session as a copay. Mm-hmm. Um, so start with your your um, insurance company, see what that policy is, um, but definitely look into it. Um, and also, especially if you're on like Medicaid, it's free then. So, you know. Oh, it is? Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. I was on Medicaid when I was pregnant with the twins. And so my therapist was free. We was in there every week. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Can we talk today? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, of course. So, I mean, listen, whatever kind of insurance you have, look and see what the mental health coverage is because all of them do cover mental health. It's just a matter of how much they're covering. Um, so don't assume yeah. the financial barrier without looking into it. Um, and for those of you who don't have insurance, like if that's a concern, um, I recommend betterhelp.com. They have... Um, financial based like um, discounted services like just based on your income um, so yeah really affordable if you just need somebody to talk to so definitely look into that if you don't have health insurance so there are options there are plenty of options um, yeah hopefully don't let the financial barrier be the reason um, and like he said if you can't if for whatever reason you can't find somebody even if that's a voice memo on your phone journaling um or talking to a close friend absolutely so where can people find you if they want to learn more purchase one of your books hi oh did she freeze up you can find you can find me on instagram at underscore Chris with two S's, 94. And you can find my books on Amazon.com under my, you can type my name in, or you can type in the title, Why Me? And then my name, Christopher Selden, and it'll pop right up. Or you can type in The Big Move, Christopher Selden, and it'll pop right up. And both, actually, both will pop up at the same time. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Chris. Um, Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I appreciate you sharing. Um, your perspective on depression and anxiety because i feel like it impacts our community more than we talk about Mm -hmm. all right guys we'll see you next week